Hello there, welcome back to another week of shows. Uh, I'm going to start this week with a nice little surprise because I was surprised I could see this one as well. Uh, this is Sion Sono's Red Post on Escher Street. This is a film that's about pretty soon. It's Sion Sono's film that he made in eight days. Uh, apart, well, he, sh he made it in eight days mostly. It's a two and a half hour film. This is. Um, a film he was work, workshopping with uh, acting students, and instead of just saying well done, he made a film out of it. This is, hasn't been done since Brian De Palma did it in home movies in the late seventies. Brian De Palma did this with not, not actors but um, crew, where he made a film with film students to show them how to make a film. The um. Sono has done this for years and years, and this is Sono doing the same thing. This is this is only a thing that a director who's a bit eccentric would do. You know, because you're taking on a lot of amateurs, and you're taking on a lot of responsibility of people who may not have the experience. So you need to have a director who has the patience to get through it. <laughs> but he did this in eight days. This is quite astonishing. And apart from the final scene, which is a final set of shots that um, happen you know, um, for the last half hour, which I think was shot in a day or something, or a day or two for that bit, but, but most of the film was eight days, and then was this final little bit. And it's still an amazing accomplishment. It's, I think it's probably my film of the year. I, I don't see anything beating it. I mean, there's nothing on the horizon that I see as a chance of beating it so far. Maybe the Malik Jesus film maybe has a chance, depending on how it, how it comes out this year, even. So, we'll see, but I'd be very surprised if anything beat it. I mean, this is one of those films where a director's just in full flow. He knows what he's doing. He's just doing amazing work. It's set amongst the world of amateur actors and ambitions of people who aren't industry professionals. So that's why Sono was workshopping people who want to be actors who still don't have that much experience. So they actually have a kind of sense to them that's not entirely professional but there's a lot of raw talent there. So he's working with these people, so he actually did a, a film that spotlighted the talent. But he did more than that. Instead of just doing a kind of workshoppy film, he made that the theme of the film. I mean, it's one of those films, you don't have to worry that much about spoilers because it's not a plot-heavy film at all. It's much more like slacker than the Richard Linklater film, where it's moving from one person to the other. You're getting different bits of character. So it's not really about the plot. I mean, there's plenty of things I won't, I won't talk about, obviously, because it'll ruin the surprise of it. But mostly, it is going from character to character. So if you don't like that, if you like a strong plot, maybe this one was not for you. But if you if you love character moments, you love, love acting, and you love charm in a film this really should deliver for you because it is an amazingly charming film an amazingly light film for Sono who tends to go darker this one is much more it's just a happier film even though there's, there's signs of darkness below the surface but it doesn't overtake everything it's not like something that's going to be dominant we something like Strange Circus the horror is dominant this one is almost like the other side of it. I mean, the two films I think this one was from Asia. The two films that this reminded me the most was um, Vital by Sukamoto, which I can't explain why. But when you've seen, if you've seen both films, you might get what I'm talking about. Why I think there's a link, but but this one's a much more optimistic film. But that's all I'm saying. I'm not going to go into why because I'll give away stuff that I don't want to give away. There's also. Um, why don't you play in hell? Which is also a Dutch darker film, but I had the same idea of the joy of filmmaking, the joy of expression, and that's something Sono can really do. Because you look at a lot of his films, even when there's darker elements, he looks at when the the enjoyment of actually doing something for yourself or doing something you love doing, like he really gets that enthusiasm. He really gets how to play up that enthusiasm and how to deliver that and create something that's beautiful about it. He just he just got that lightness of touch and he knows how to inspire people and he's 
just really a wonderful director. He's one of the best directors in the world at the moment. I mean, him and Sukumoto, I think, are the two, like, leading, for me, the two leading directors of people who I want to see the next film like, as soon as it comes out. Like, they're the two that are really on form at the moment who have been knocking them out. Like, great film after great film for me. Just, like, stunning works after stunning works. And even like, the lesser films are actually still amazing. <laughs> but when they really hit on something, they can really deliver something unique and just very personal but very relatable. They've just got that thing about them that it's just wonderful and it's wonderful to see. Now, the film's plot really is it's about a set of additions. This fictional director... Um, is an art house darling, kind of like Sono. He's had hits, but he's viewed as a bit of a miserable bastard by the producer, said by the producer of the studio financing this film. He's a bit miserable. He wishes films could be lighter and nicer and uh, more cheerful and more consumer friendly. But, but they love the fact that he actually can get his films in festivals and the festivals love him and he's a big auteur. So, but he's, he's going through a rough patch and the script he's written, he's been working on is not finished and it's not really working. And even the people in the production are like, what the hell is this? This is mundane crap. <laughs> Just like, this does not work. Like, we can't start shooting this. But we have to tell him he'll find it on the, on, the, on the set or something. Just hoping that something good will come of it because it's like, it's not here. It's just not here. So you've got that element, but you've also got the element of this famous director is going to cast amateurs because it's a low budget film, he wants to go back to his roots. That's the kind of background, that's stuff he found, he found as the film goes on. But what you, um, what you're seeing the film through is a set of people who are going to auditions. So you initially find out that um, auditions are going to happen. Like his assistants are all going around like cafes and things and just putting little flyers out. So fill in this form and put a little photo and post it to us. And if we think you might be right, we'll bring you in for audition. What they don't realise is anybody who applies for this might get an audition. Because they're, they're just looking for something new. And you've seen the different people who are going for the audition. The first half of the film is the auditions, but it's also the story of the people who are going for the auditions. So you, you get the what led them to this, and then you get to see the auditions, and you see how each one's different. So you've seen uh, for what the director sees, which is these strangers coming in and talking and doing auditions, and some of them are flat, and some of them are really emotive, and some of them are sarcastic, and it's like the whole range of what you can see in one scene from different people's interpretations of it. So what is, a, in fact, a very vague scene um, is actually the... It's a, it's a basis for what you can actually do with a scene. Because if you've worked in theatre, which I have, Actors get bored with the scene and, and keep on changing it every day just to try and make it interesting for them. And it's really interesting to watch because it's like you're seeing different interpretations of the scene throughout a run of a play. And that's what's interesting. And if you're a director, you'll see actors do different things with the scene, and different actors can bring different things. And that will affect the film in a way that the auteur theory doesn't really go into like how an actor's energy can affect a film. So that's why casting is so important to get the right energy for the film and why trying to get a certain actor for a film is really important. In this film, by just showing it and also showing you what leads to an actor creating that performance, so, like sometimes it's a dysfunction within themselves, sometimes it's an ambition within themselves and who they are if they're a raw talent. Because these are just raw talents at the moment. But there's lots of different things within someone's life that will lead them to either be very slick and practiced or very raw and need to be managed. And it's all about the form of acting. So Soto took a lot of actors who were raw and took what they had and found ways to show it through his narrative, which is what's really beautiful about the film. So that's really why it's a wonderful film. 
because it's something that the joy of actually seeing these people and how the process works. And Sono has a joy in that, and but also because he knows how to structure a film, even though the film doesn't seem that structured, the scene to scene of who gets introduced where and why and how have, well, how things tie together all are important. They're all important to how you interpret the film and how you feel the film. So it's a very clever way of actually showing you the process of acting and of filmmaking and how it can develop and how it can go right and go wrong and how some people just, no matter how much passion they've got, they don't have the talent. It shows you how some people go into this trying to it's for their own selfish gains and other people go into it for their own catharsis and how some people go... There's a variety of interpretations of what an actor is and what a director is and what they need from the film. So it's about the actual complexity and the how life infects a film, how life affects it and creates it. So it's not all just about the pre-planned director's idea it's like how the director interprets things within the world he's given and how the, within the world he has to create and how everyone involved with him helps or hinders like how producers can be conservative and hinder the process and not let it become what it should be and how you know right talent can just set a rocket now on a project that might not be working but you get the right person there you can do something amazing and you can actually energize the whole story and fix it in a different way and actually create something that is uh, which is like human and unique the film goes into all sorts of things like you have obsessive fans like what you've seen behind me these are fans of the director who make, make all these people slaves to him even though he doesn't know they really exist because they just love his films other, other people go into auditions don't even like his films they say oh we better say we like them just because we don't want to offend him. <laughs> might lose his job. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, it does, Sono is taking the mickey out of the idea of the, the um, director, the great director, just by showing him going shopping by himself and having lots of problems and not always being the strongest person on set and uh, grumbling his way through certain things and having his assistants be annoyed with him. But then he also shows you the other side when he actually has, when his talent does come through and actually focus these things and it shows you the demons but also shows you the demons of everyone else and it varies who you see okay i don't want really to tell you everybody i mentioned the fans because they come early in the story so you can so, you, so it's not like uh, something you have to wait very long for but there's other people i mean i'm trying my best to keep it to the first half but also see what the themes are so it's a complicated film but it's also a very joyful film it's kind of like eight and a half in a way but I think it's a way more human because the director is much more approachable. Like it's a talented guy, but he's not like up himself so much and so self-important. So it's a much more joyful film. The, the joy of the art comes out. The way that I think in eight and a half sometimes it's a bit restrained because it's a bit colder, you know. Well, I find it colder. I think it's a very eight and a half is a good film, but I find it colder than something like this, which actually has a more much more a sense of the life that flows through a project. Because it's about like, more amateur level things rather than the more slick professional kind of soulless thing. So um, so it's a different kind of film, but it's also, I think it's a much warmer film about the, the dreams of people, the ambitions of people, and how it happens when it works for you and what happens when it doesn't work for you. Just like, and what happens when there's ups and downs of life and what, it, what all that means to you. There, there have been there's some studying performances by newcomers who are just astonishing talent that you hope they get to work with Sono again or work for other directors and actually find their talent. But I, I do think Sono, a lot of actors and actresses he works with don't get the same um, you know, attention by other directors. They don't seem to flourish under other directors because the other directors maybe don't know how to work with them. It's like... Um, there's a raw talent, but I, I think some, direct, some directors just don't know how to use it. So that's just the way it is. So I tried, it was, it's sad that when you get a lot of talent, it's not been 
used properly, but that's life, that's the way things go sometimes in filmmaking. But this film shows you the process of why that happens and what people, what actors can maybe do to themselves to make themselves colder and less approachable, you know, and how the process is of going from being an amateur actor to be a professional actor. So it's all the process of filmmaking and what it takes and what it's all about. But finally what the film comes down to is, is this is a, a joy of life film, a joy of the process of life and trying to make meaning for yourself. Even if it's not meaning for anyone else, it's meaning for yourself. Even if you're a bit stupid sometimes, it's like finding some sort of meaning for you and your life. And that's what's beautiful about it. It's, um, it is saying there's no real extras. Everybody's got their own point of view. And any film just focuses on one point of view and there's all this other stuff going on in the background that you don't ever see. And it really celebrates that. And that's what's so beautiful about it. It's so heartwarming about it. It's like, it's a good time for everybody. And an industry that actually always focuses on male trauma a lot of the time. It's quite good that they have a director like Sono who seems much more interested in women. Like his films, his films, a lot of his best characters are women characters. And he doesn't just have them as being like, you know, just basic male fantasies. They're all people who have their own strangeness and weirdness and they don't always like each other and it's, and they're screw up sometimes. It's really good that he's got this attitude of people are people and that's it. Just, we'll see what happens. So that's one of the great things about him. He's actually very good with women. And he actually, um, he does that and, and encourages his actresses. And he doesn't do the thing that you get with some female directors where it's a bit too sentimental or a bit too not harsh enough to keep it interesting. There seem to be a lot of male directors when they do macho subjects that can be a bit... You don't want to go too far here because it's a bit sensitive and I might offend myself. You know, it's good to have a director who does no bullshit basically about that. It's just like pure beans. Like, directors of either gender who are like that are always good to find because you need them. People don't care. It's just like, these are characters and that's it. You know, don't uh, sentimentalise anybody. Just treat them as who they are. Which is what I'm trying to see. I think I went a bit off. <laughs> So, um, I'm probably cancelled. It's okay. Anyway, um, this is a beautiful film. It's a wonderful film. Again, I don't see another film coming out that's going to beat this for a film of the year this year. This just is such a beautiful film. It's just wondrous. And, um, you went for a great time. I've tried to avoid telling you that much, but giving you the sense of the mood of it. Because it isn't really plot heavy. There's, lo there's lots of really interesting things. And I haven't even touched the one of the main plot lines that actually is very moving but you you you, you get to it if, go watch this film you'll really have a great time unless you hate people i don't see you not loving this film it is just so beautiful so i hope you enjoyed this i'll be back with another video soon that's me for now bye <laughs>